Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial on my YouTube channel. It's Mimi and today I'll be doing something a bit different and showing you how to create notebook covers using epoxy resin. Everything I use will be listed and linked down below along with some discount codes. Before we begin, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel and make sure to ring the bell notification so you can be notified whenever I post a new video. I upload a new tutorial every week. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. To create my covers, I'll be using this silicone mold from BJ's Glitter. It measures approximately 9 inches by 7 inches. I created three custom glitter mixes for this project. My purple is a mix of Celestial, Purple Panic, and Lollipop Sparkle, all from BJ's. For my orange, I used Frosted Marigold and Creamsicle from the Glitter Heart Co. And lastly, for my green, I used Grinch from Glitter Heart Co. and Granny Smith from BJ's. I'll be mixing a total of 80 ml of resin for this mold, 40 ml of Part A and 40 of Part B. I'm using KS Resin's Liquid Art Epoxy. I always add my Part B, which is the hardener, into my cup first because it's more fluid. Then I'll add my Part A, which is the resin, on top. You want to mix for a minimum of three minutes, making sure to thoroughly scrape the sides of the cup and the sides of your popsicle stick. Go ahead and split your mixed epoxy into the three glitter colors we created and mix them together really well. I did reserve a tiny bit in case I need extra of a certain color. Now I'll go ahead and pour the colors into the mold. I didn't have a specific pattern that I was creating, so I'm just randomly dropping in each color wherever I like. This is the fun part. So I encourage you to use your imagination and play around with placement. The design is completely abstract and there's no right or wrong way to do this. After I emptied each color, I used the resin that I reserved and quickly mixed up some more purple and added that in.
I'll then take my heat gun and try to move the colors around and to blend some of the edges together. Using heat will also pop the bubbles that have risen to the surface. Be very careful to not overheat the resin or mold. Too much heat could cause your epoxy to not cure properly. After I use my heat gun, I'll also go ahead and drag my popsicle stick in the design to separate the colors more. I do try to avoid scraping the bottom of the mold so I don't damage it. I'll continue to go back and forth with my heat gun and my popsicle stick until I'm happy with the design. Lastly, I'll spray the surface with my 91% alcohol to pop any remaining bubbles and then cover up my project and set it aside to fully cure. That'll take about 8 to 12 hours. My cover is now dry and you'll notice as I unmold it that I did add a clear top coat after my glitter layer was dry. I did get some excess in a few places, but I can clean that up with some clippers and sandpaper. So here are my two covers, one for the front and one for the back. This one is the one I've already done with you guys on screen when I was filling the mold. And like I said, I was going to clean up the edges with the overflow and then I did give it a good sand down so that we can move on to the next step, which will be adding our water slide images. I already re-drilled the holes for the binder clips. Here is the side that actually touched the mold, which is a lot brighter. And I did this one off screen and I think I've decided I'm going to go ahead and use this one that I did off screen as the front cover mostly because if you guys can see it, I don't know, I think you can on camera, but this one has more of a 3D look and it was the way that I poured it. And really it was kind of more of a mistake because I didn't have enough epoxy when I was first pouring it. so. I just poured what I had with the colors that I'd mixed up, which is the same exact colors as the one that we did on screen. And um, this is the result of it. So you can definitely see the dimension in it. And I just like it a little bit better than this one, which is still really pretty. So this will be the back cover. So I'll flip it over like this. So they will lay like this with the filler paper inside, whatever you choose to put. But let's go ahead and move on to adding the water slides. You can also use vinyl on this, but to me water slides are a lot easier as far as application and not having to weed and all that. So I was contacted by Hippo right there. And they asked if I wanted to try out their water slide decal paper. This is for the inkjet and it is clear, which is what I normally use. If you guys are not familiar with water slide paper, I do have a video on that. I will link it up at the top right as well as in the description box below. It goes over a complete step-by-step -step on how to use clear water slide decal. So I did tell them that I'd go ahead and try this out. And I will give you guys my honest opinion as to how I feel about it because I have used other brands as well. So this one is A4 and it comes with 20 sheets. I've already gone ahead and chosen my images. Here they are. In staying with the Halloween theme, I went ahead and printed out couple of witches. I didn't know if I was going to use this spider web. I'm still not sure. And then for the sentiment, I chose this witch can be bribed with chocolate. I thought it was really cute. I did mirror one of them because what I like to do on my covers is when I put the image on the back side, I kind of like to 
make it backwards. If, I hope that makes sense. It's just a quirky little thing that I like to do. So I've already sealed this three times with clear spray, clear gloss spray. Let it dry in between each coat and you can't really see it, but I can see it in person that um, it is glossy on top. It printed out really well onto this paper. So now let's go ahead and cut these out and I'm gonna go ahead and apply them on my covers. Now that my images are all cut out, I do have my bowl of room temperature water. So let's go ahead and start with the front cover first. Probably we'll do this. Something like that. Let's get this in some water and see how well this water slide paper performs. Again, you want to make sure that you wet the surface, that you will be applying the water slide to. And that came off the backing really fast, which is awesome. So you can see, you can see that it's releasing the back. So I'm going to lay this down. And of course, this is a lot easier applying this on a flat surface as opposed to trying to do this on a tumbler. But the application is exactly the same. While I work on that, I'm going to add this one in to get that ready. I'm going to grab my silicone makeup brush. remove any excess water that is trapped underneath. And I will dry this off. You can also use a dry paper towel, but I'm basically patting it dry. You don't want to really rub because then you have the chance of moving your water slide. I think it looks great. You can barely even see that it is something on top and especially when we add a layer of resin on top it'll be nice and secured underneath and I think it'll look awesome so so far I'm really liking this water slide paper so let's move on to the back and go ahead and finish this up Here are the front and back covers. I think I got them placed relatively similarly. So you don't want to overwork this in any way, otherwise you will run the risk of either it cracking or that you will end up ripping it because it is very delicate. But all in all, I really do like this water slide paper. as far as my first impressions go. So I really think that you guys would 
enjoy using this as well. I will have a link to their store, which is on Amazon, and there you will actually be able to save 40% with the discount that they offer as well as using the code that I will provide in the description box below. So make sure to go and check out that link. I'm gonna fully let these dry probably about an hour or so, and then we will move on to the next step where we will seal these in with a layer of epoxy on top, let that cure, and then we'll be done. So I will see you guys when these are fully dry. Okay, so now that the water slide has dried on this side, I do wanna mask off the inside so that I don't get any drips on it, have to sand that down, have any drama. So we are going to mask this side off. You can choose to use painter's tape. There's different ways of masking items off so that you don't get resin drips. My favorite way and the way that I have come to love is using masking fluid. And if you are not familiar, masking fluid is used mostly by watercolor artists. And I have also tried Elmer's glue, but it actually takes a really long time to dry. And I'm very impatient and I want to get to the next step. So I have been using this for a few months and have been really liking the results. I've already done the other one off screen and so let's go ahead and apply the masking fluid. I did time the other one. It took about 20 minutes or so to have it fully dry and I can use the other side. So first what you wanna do is grab a paintbrush. You don't wanna use anything really nice because the masking fluid does have a tendency to ruin your brushes. To avoid that, I've wet my brush and I've also put a layer of my Dawn dish soap on both sides. You can see that kind of glossiness. So then when I'm done, I'm going to immediately rinse this off, get all the soap off, any remaining masking fluid off, and your paintbrush is good to go. So you just wanna do a really thin layer I'll also go over the holes. It's not a big deal. This stuff peels off really easily. So you don't wanna handle it too much while it's drying and once it is dry because then you'll lose the effect of what you're trying to do with the masking fluid, which is to mask. You don't have to be really precise with this. You just don't want to glob it on. You just want a really thin layer. And as you can see, it goes on white. When it is dry, it'll be clear. Other people have used liquid latex. I've actually never used that, but I wanted to use something a little bit more handy and I thought I'd give this a try. I'm trying to also avoid the sides just so that I can have my resin top coat run off the side so that it can cover up the sanding that I did and give it a smooth finish. You do have to work relatively quickly. The stuff will dry on you. pretty rapidly. So I'm just going right up to the edges. That's the most important area. And sometimes you'll see that it does shrink back a little bit. If you see any areas that don't have any of this on it, just go back and touch it up with a little bit more to make sure that everything is fully covered. And that's it. I will check the sides 
to make sure I didn't get any of the masking fluid on the sides and this actually looks pretty good so I will set that off to dry of course the warmer your area is the faster it is going to dry and of course you can't see it but this one already has it it has a very it's not even tacky it's I don't know how to explain it but you'll definitely know which side has the masking fluid and which side doesn't so here is the other side the one that we'll be putting a top coat on so as soon as this dries we are going to get these set up so that we can do a full top coat and then we will be all finished my masking fluid is completely dry so i went ahead and propped each cover up on some one ounce medicine cups i also mixed up about 120 ml of epoxy but i'll end up only using 80 to coat both covers First, I went ahead and poured some on each surface near the center, and then I'll use my popsicle stick to spread it out all over the entire surface. Even though epoxy is self-leveling, I will help it along by using not only my popsicle stick, but my heat gun as well. For these covers, I do want to make sure that my epoxy runs over all four sides to cover up and smooth out the sanded edges. You'll also see me use a gloved finger to wipe around the edges to even the epoxy out. Make sure that not only are you working in a well-ventilated area and wearing your proper PPE, but that you're working in a well-lit area so you can see if there are any missed spots without any resin. Once both covers are fully covered with epoxy, I'll use my torch to pop any remaining bubbles and then leave them to dry for about 8-12 to 12 hours. Your dry times may vary depending on the epoxy that you're using. Here we are the next day and my top coats are fully dry. I'll now remove any resin drips on the underside, then remove the masking fluid. First you'll want to gently heat up a small section where the drips are. 10 to 20 seconds is more than enough to soften the drips. Then I'll go ahead and grab some cuticle clippers to remove them. Repeat these steps all the way around until all the dry drips have been removed. You can also knock down any roughness by using a higher grit sanding paper. To remove the masking fluid, all you have to do is use your fingers to rub the surface until it all peels up and off your cover. This process is super simple 
and totally satisfying. So here are the finished front and back covers. I think it came out beautifully. The Hippo water slide paper held up really well. It looks crystal clear underneath the resin. It was really easy to work with and I would really recommend it if you guys are looking for a drama free water slide paper for your tumblers or any of your resin projects like this. Last thing we have to do is put it together. I still haven't gotten my hands on like the three pronged rings that people have been using. So what I've been using are just one inch book rings from the Dollar Tree. And you will need six of these. Okay, I finally got these open. I don't know what is wrong with these, but they were extremely difficult to open. Anyway, moving along. So I've already pre-cut my paper. You can also get these online. I believe the size is A5. Don't quote me, I'm not really sure. But what I did was just cut these down to Cut these down to five and a half inches and the length is eight inches. You can keep it just like a half sheet of eight and a half by 11, but I do like to have a little room at the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these in. And there you have it. Here is your custom notebook cover. We did a Halloween theme. This is just some lightweight cardstock. Well, not too lightweight, it's about 65 pounds. Here's the back cover. And if you are wondering, I did make my holes a little bit bigger. It's only because when I did my very first one, I found that the holes that the mold makes is just way too small for the binder rings that I was using. So just to make my life easier, I went ahead and make them bigger. You can keep them the same size. It is totally up to you. But there you go. Let me know what you guys think and make sure to check the description box for all the links and discount codes. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll be happy to answer any questions if anything was unclear. And until next time, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you guys real soon in another video. Bye everyone.